Hi, I'm Anna Azalian. And I'm Lenny Ruth. Welcome to Outlet on Screen. Today we are bringing you guys coverage of the election, how it's going to affect you, and what you need to do to get out there and vote. Yeah, Delaney, I know a lot of Ohioans have already cast their ballot through early voting or absentee voting, but if you haven't voted yet and you're planning on doing so in person, here's a look at what to expect. So what we're going to be doing is, when you walk into a polling location, we're going to have a hands-free sanitizing station. It's going to be by foot. You can sanitize. Now, this is if you're a voter. You are going to be required to wear a mask in the voting locations this time. And we will be providing one for you if you do not have one if you come and some people you know they have a medical condition or they you know don't want to wear a mask we're going to respect that but you will not be allowed in the polling location you'll do what's called curbside voting we'll get your ballot for you there'll be one of each party and help you vote and that way you'll be able to cast your vote in person and Quibi also told me that there will be designated poll workers to sanitize things in between each voter that's awesome because I know I voted in Summit County and there was less sanitation than I had originally hoped. So I'm glad Athens County is on top of things. And surprisingly, in line, I saw a lot of other young voters like myself. I was very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, well, our reporter Joe Collins actually talked to a few political organizations at Ohio University about how they're encouraging young people to vote. That's right, as we come down to the final days before the election day, I sat down and discussed with members from the Ohio University College Democrats and Republicans to see how they're encouraging young people to vote. So we have our weekly meetings on Tuesday and at those meetings, obviously we're talking about current events and we're hosting local candidates from Athens. So we've been really encouraging everybody to go out and vote using our weekly meetings. Um, we also have an amazing social media director who has been posting a lot of stuff about mail-in ballots, um, early voting, and voting early in person, and voting on election day. So we've been encouraging a lot online as well as just like at our meetings over Zoom. Well, this year with COVID happening, it's been a lot more difficult. However, we're still trying to do everything that we've done in years past. So primarily we're doing voter registration drives when voter registration was still available. We've been doing a lot of phone banking, making phone calls for like the Ohio Republican Party. And then we've also been doing uh, dropping literature for certain candidates off at different people's doors around the state. Thanks, Joe. That was a really interesting look into how young people are encouraging other young people to vote. I think that's super important. Yeah, Delaney, I mean, I think every election I see stuff on social media, young people encouraging other young people to vote just like those political organizations are doing. Brian Kerp actually talked to a political science professor at Baldwin Wallace University about if he thinks the young people actually will go vote this year. Hey Anna, yeah, I caught up with political science professor Tom Sutton to see if 2020 is finally the year that people go out to vote and what may be drawing more younger people to the polls. Young people don't have as much of a stake in the game of politics as they do when they get older. They generally don't own property. Uh, they're just getting started. They're really focused on their own lives and trying to get started, whether it's post high school employment or college. Um, and so they're not as directly affected by the issues as later in life when you buy a house, you're paying higher taxes, you start a family, you start paying attention more to K through 12 education. Uh, and so again, this is not to single out an age group, it's more to talk about where you are in the stage of social development. So it's part of what I tend to um, push against when people say, oh, well, they don't turn out the way older people do It's well. We all turn out on the basis of self-interest and the self-interest of younger people don't tend to align with what are the central issues of a national election. And that tends to be why we see lower turnout. But again, I would emphasize in this election in 2020, I think that turnout is gonna be a lot higher. We saw the same thing happen in 2008. And I don't think this is temporary. Issues like climate change in particular uh, race relations, issues of diversity and acceptance, I think are first and foremost in young people's minds. And these are not temporary issues. I think these are issues that stick with them, that they're gonna be pushing inside and outside the political system. And quite frankly, young people were the driving force behind the demonstrations that we saw throughout the spring and summer. Um, and many of them being people who care about the issue, even if it doesn't directly affect them. Uh, it was monumental. We haven't seen that kind of social activism on the streets since the 1960s, when again, that social activism was driven largely by the younger generation. 
Thanks, Brian. And Delaney, you talked to some OU students about whether or not they were going to go vote, right? I did. I talked to five OU students, five young voters about whether or not they're voting and kind of just what's motivating them in this election and for the future. I am going to vote because I feel that is a, it is, um, it's our right to be able to vote. It's the one thing that everyone is able to do and you should take advantage of it. Yes, I am voting and because I think it's very important. Yes, I am voting and I just feel like it is, um, you know, part of being a citizen in the United States. Like it's never been a question, am I voting or not? It just is. The reason that I'm voting is uh, one, it is my right um, to vote. So I believe that everybody should vote because it is our right, um, especially coming from a demographic that wasn't able to vote in the past. I'm voting because I think it's very important if, you know, you can vote, then you should. A lot is motivating me to vote. I think that a lot needs to be changed with our country and this election is one step in the right direction, could be one step in the right direction. I would say the separation of the nation at this point in time um, is my biggest motivation to vote. Uh, thinking back to when I was growing up, um, even like with our last president, um, even though I'm not saying that our previous presidents have been the best president uh, of all time, but I can definitely say that the country is definitely more divided at this point in time than it was eight years ago. I'm motivated because um, the this presidential, um, you know, administration has been not <laughs> exactly what I would have hoped for in a presidential administration, I guess, is a nice way to put it. I would hope that we can take a look at everything that has gone or came about within the last couple of months. Um, I feel like this has been like the most crucial time um, throughout the previous four years. Uh, so whether it was the coronavirus or um, police brutality or uh, pride months, whatever it might've been um, that has taken place within the uh, last couple of months, I believe it was a very, very stressful um, time for a lot of people. And I would like to see those issues addressed um, going forward. I would definitely like to see, you know, not all this division and separation. And I mean, everyone kind of, I just feel like now more than ever in my life, it's like, oh my gosh, why is there such a divide in anything and everything you do? I just feel like we've been moving backwards a lot lately. And I would like to see some progress being made, um, you know, for you know, people of color, for women, um, a lot of the minorities in our country. I hope to see president who's maybe a bit younger. Um, so I forget what the age is, but maybe in their later 40s and 50s. Well, in terms of the pandemic, I hope that the United States chooses to turn, uh, make more strict, um, decisions in terms of businesses and the public being open because for the very short period of time that we did that we saw success and other countries are doing that and they're doing much better than us so i'm hoping that there are more strict laws so that we can end this pandemic sooner rather than later thanks delaney it was really interesting to see all the different things that are important to different people yeah it was just really fun talking to everyone and yeah just seeing what's important what everyone's voting for for sure um, but that's all we have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Outlet on Screen. I'm Delaney Ruth. And I'm Anna Azalian. Before we go, we'll leave you with a look of how people in Athens are sharing their political support. Thanks for watching.